All right, well, we're adjusting the screen. I'll, uh, I'll kick off anyway. It's nice to see a packed room already this, this early in the morning. Thanks. So we are in the Internet of Things dev room. Great, the slides are there. So, so uh, I'm going to quickly introduce myself, then talk about what the IOD dev room is about. Then I'll quickly mention Peter Hinches, but uh, Zubab is going to do that more uh, explicitly. And then I'll uh, give a short overview of the day. So uh, my name is Maxime Vesso. I'm an electronics and embedded uh, engineer and a hacker. Uh, I'm actually a firmware lead right now at a, at a IoT startup company, so that's also why I really love the IoT uh, uh, environment. Right. So <laughs> let's put this on. Uh, I did. Uh, or I'm involved in a few uh, free and open source software projects, such as uh, Pico TCP, which is a free embedded uh, TCP/IP stack. There's going to be talks about this uh, today in, in this room as well. There's also going to be a, there's a stand about Pico TCP. Uh, I'm also working on Frosted, which is a free POSIX operating system uh, for small embedded devices. Uh, there's also going to be a talk about that later today and. Uh, Linked to Frosted is Unicore MX, which is uh, which is a actually a, a core library to support uh, all uh, all functions of microcontrollers or of ARM ARM Cortex M0 up to M7 microcontrollers. That's just briefly who I am and why I'm in this dev room. Then we have the Internet of Things dev room. This is the fourth time we're organizing this, and it's it's the first time I'm hosting the dev room. And before me, the three years earlier, it was Peter, Peter Hinches who hosted this dev room. And it's because of him that, uh, that I'm here right now and that we're all here right now. Uh, the Fosden dev rooms are whole day tracks, as you know, and they're specifically focused on one topic aimed at developers. The whole Fosden is about developers, and that's why we're here. Why now the Internet of Things? As uh, Helen Doos from the University of Cambridge once said, she said, we have a clear vision to create a world where every object from jumbo jets to needles, sewing needles, are linked to the Internet. Of course, this has been big words that have been around for a long time now, but I think we're slowly getting there. More and more things are getting connected. There's a lot of trouble with connecting many small things also. But OK, these are all challenges that we have to face. That's what makes this really interesting. Uh, we want to have very diverse talks in this dev room. So uh, when I put out the call for papers, uh, I, uh, I ask for a few, few uh, things, like machine-to-machine -machine communication between f small devices, distributed application autonomous or, or self-controlled devices, also uh, more infrastructure related, maybe building on the TCP IP protocol or novelties in that, that domain, mesh networking, of course, if we have that many devices, uh, message queuing, solving real life problems with these Internet of Things solutions, interoperability, since we have that, this many different devices, how are they going to talk to each other? So this makes for uh, yeah, very diverse talks and maybe even uh, talks that will uh, um, will will uh, yeah interact nicely with e with each other. We'll see what the day brings. Um, of course, all the presentations here must be must be fully uh, free and open source software and related to software development. <laughs> Then this is Peter Hinches, but since um, Zubab is going to give a, a way better presentation about him, I'll keep this really br brief. Peter Hinches was a was a writer, a programmer, a thinker, and I, I might even say a visionary. He wrote more than 30 protocols and distributed software. You might know him from AMQP or Zero MQ. From the many books he wrote, they're all excellent. I read all of them uh, except one. Uh, w th this one, which I should read, uh, that. Uh, I just heard, so I'm, I'm going to do that. He was the president of a foundation for free information infrastructure. He fought for software patents. He, uh, he, he was in the standardization of the Microsoft OOXML office format and so much more. Uh, and like I said, he organized this dev room for the last three years. And we want to keep this, this tradition going in respect to him uh, and, of course, because it's a great dev room. Then in April 2016, he was diagnosed with termin uh, terminal 
uh, metastasis of, a, of his previous cancer. And uh, that's why later today, and also still a little bit now, we will have a small in memoriam uh, for Peter, Peter Hinchin. So if you're interested, be sure to be in the, in the K building at 6 o'clock this evening. But now, let's continue with the overview of the day. So just very quickly, you all have the, have the booklets, of course. But what are we going to talk about? Uh, the first talk after this is going to be about coffee machines speaking Bokeh or Boche. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's about the Modbus protocol. Then uh, we have a demo where we are playing with lights. So uh, IoT is all about connecting all kinds of stuff. And of course, lights, LEDs, uh, bigger lights are fun to play with. Uh, Adam is a project where uh, they're monitoring air quality. Then there's the Eclipse IoT plus cl Cloud Foundry. They're building a platform spe specifically for IoT uh, applications. Then there's uh, six low pan in Pico TCP. So uh, Pico TCP is this uh, library, TCP IP library that's already there. Six low pan is one of the upcoming uh, protocols that that's really uh, focused on the IoT. We have JerryScript, which is a lightweight JavaScript engine. Uh, Yocto-based IoT devices. So you might know Yocto, uh, this built environment for building uh, for bu building embedded devices. We have the frosted embedded POSIX operating system. So, OK, this is an operating system. It's POSIX, but it's also very much focused on connectivity and, and thus Internet of Things. Warp 10 is a bit less embedded, but that's OK. Uh, it's about time series analysis. So you're going to get a lot of data out of a lot of uh, Internet of Things devices, uh, what to do with this data, how to represent it. Uh, it's usually put into some form of time series. So more about that in this talk. We have uh, Project Lighthouse. We have uh, Scientific MicroPython for microcontrollers. Um, we have IOTivity for devices from the devices to the cloud. So this, this is the complete link. And then we have an, a talk about the open smart grid uh, platform. So this also maybe a little, uh, not, not so small infrastructure, but really smart grid is uh, it's way bigger. So I think it's a very diverse uh, day that we're uh, looking at. That's it for me. I'm now uh, handing the word to, uh, to Zubab. Thanks. Okay, thanks so much. I'm going to hand you the mic. Okay. Thanks very much. So, um, my name is Benjamin Henrion. I'm a Belgian, as, uh, and I was a good friend of Peter. Um, first time I met was in 2000, uh, in 2005 during the software patent directive. Uh, Peter was running a company called Imatics, and they were threatened by a, a patent troll on uh, a patent around matching a telephone number and an email in the database for an SMS gateway. <coughs> and uh, I first met him in a, in a, in a small conference uh, where our opponents were trying to break uh, our presentations. <laughs> and Peter was so furious that he said, no more slides. I'm going to talk about my own experience. And that was the best speech I've ever saw on the topic, and after that we we started to to work together. Um, he recruited me for after my university uh, time to be uh, a permanent uh, representative of FFI, uh, the organization that fought against software patents for the last since 1999. And so we made. Uh, that was uh, July 2005 when the directive was rejected. And uh, six months afterwards, when I started to work with Peter, the commission announced that they're going to relaunch the debate on the community patent, which was basically uh, the large companies saying, uh, we, we ask to drop this directive project and to push for uh, a central patent court, which would give, the, at the end, the same result. Um, and we are. I think 12 years later, 
and they are very very close now to get what they want uh, Germany and UK with the brexit are a bit delaying the process but basically um, I'm still here 12 years later trying to fight it uh, we might we are working with some other people to try to stop it via um, <coughs> via constitutional complaint in Germany uh, and maybe other countries. Um, so I wanted to uh, to say that uh, I organized together with Peter the last three years of uh, this uh, dev room. I was taking care of the video streaming. Um, we Peter Peter and I worked, uh, we, I, I had the chance to, to work with Peter uh, last year. I was coming back from Switzerland, where I tried to to move there because of the mountains and the nice the nice uh, area over there. It didn't work out, so I was coming back to Belgium, uh, and I was looking for a job. And Peter told me, "Yeah, I have this problem with Android uh, Zero MQ uh, Java cross compilation. I don't understand anything." I said, "Yeah, I do. I do some uh, embedded development around OpenWRT." So uh, I said that maybe I can help you to set up the, the cross compilation with uh, Android SDK and NDK. So uh, that was like November. Um, we did uh, we did some CMake around that. We did uh, Node.js bindings for ZeroMQ. We did um, we worked around Zire. So Zire is a, is an interesting protocol for the Internet of Things because it doesn't go in the cloud. It try to find peers on the LAN. And if it's pre-configured, it can find friendly, uh, friendly devices. Like typically, if you have a Samsung machine, a Samsung TV, and a Samsung fridge, if they are connected to the LAN, they will find each other. And uh, we made um, we made some uh, interesting de demo um, where maybe I can show I can show uh, um, this one first. Um, that was. One thing we did uh, uh, in February last year, just before FOSDEM, and we presented uh, at the last presentation of this uh, dev room. Um, he had uh, he's, he was quite a good musician, so he wanted to uh, export. It's a MIDI keyboard, so it's a MIDI interface, and he wanted to export the the key events uh, through the RMQ to uh, a laptop that has the, the <coughs> synthesizer. So what we did. Uh, what I did was to take one of those devices which are running on PanWRT, uh, which has USB port, and where I could plug in a MIDI to USB converter, um, get the device uh, 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 detected by uh, a MIDI stack, and then um, uh, taking all the events from 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 the from the driver, um, and then pipe that to a, a Zoom queue. Uh, Zire uh, 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 demon that we wrote. So there are still traces of that on GitHub. So if you search for uh, um, if you search for uh, uh, MIDICast on GitHub, you will find the project. Um, so and we got it working like uh, the hackathon. We organized the hackathon two days before. Uh, before first them or zero MQ hackathon where all the zero MQ people met and we we made some progress on in, on on different things. Uh, we I managed to run Malamut, which is the broker of zero MQ, uh, on this device. We managed to crash it as well. Uh, and after that, some people came and fixed the the fact that you can limit the amount of memory uh, that you allocate to the broker on this device. So that was nice, nice improvement. Um, so yeah, we made we made this uh, this thing. And uh, Murphy, when you try to make a demo, Murphy is always around. And uh, basically, the setup is that we were having this device connected to the to the to the keyboard, and we had another blue central access point. And we said, oh no, it's okay. We're gonna connect to the FOSDEM network. <coughs> so we connected to the FOSDEM network. Uh, but it didn't work. So basically, the Fastnet network blocks block, uh, broadcast, and Zire, since it's sending broadcast, uh, could not connect to the to the other devices. So um, we talked. Uh, uh, we had uh, again the Zero MQ hackathon the last two days. Uh, uh, thanks for the people who joined. 
uh, they are somewhere in the audience. Um, and we talk about how, uh, uh, different techniques on how to avoid if the broadcast is blocked, what can we do next? Can we maybe try to go to uh, uh, use other mechanism like gossip or even go to 88888, trying to find each other, uh, things like that. Um, so that was last year. Um, last year we also had, we had a winner last year. Uh, <laughs> it was, I think it was from the United States. I've st I don't know if he's, if he's here this year, but uh, we had we had this uh, person making presentation, and he had some nice two uh, uh, suitcase. I think I can recognize a QB board one. Uh, there are some uh, here. You have uh, uh, Arduino shield with all the things exposed. You have some uh, Ethernet switch over here. <laughs> uh, multiple buttons. I see. I see uh, this uh, Intel, Intel Quark-based uh, Intel Edison. Edison. Uh, and this is only one face. There was also the other face and the second one. <laughs> so that was fun. Um, so in terms of uh, in terms of uh, IoT, um, IoT, we so the last. What happened is that we ha we organized this hackathon um, in his garage because he had a garage where we could organize things. We heat heat it up. Uh, the hackathon went fine. For them, went fine. And then we continued to heat it, heat it up the the garage, and that was basically became our office for for like a month and a half. And we were preparing uh, another demonstration of uh, the power of Zyre. Um, so we developed something called GLAR, and GLAR is a daemon that uh, basically runs on the device and can run some commands. Basically, it, it joins, uh, it finds other peers on the network, on the LAN, and then uh, if some of the, those no this other node is in control mode, then it can send commands to the other machines that are on the LAN. Um, so we did... Um, we did. Uh, I did some. I modified those uh, devices to add uh, uh, a light, a bicycle light, um, and we put them together on batteries. And we could show, uh, for example, that um, uh, they could uh, display Morse code at the same time. And if you would remove one node and put it back. Uh, it would be back in the cycle of executing commands uh, together. So I'm gonna. Uh, I pre we prepared this demo for uh, IoT conference in Munich, uh, where he went alone to make the demo. So I was really wa uh, afraid of Murphy again. Uh, <laughs> so I really prepared everything in advance, and he just had to play the the dem the, the, the demonstration there. Uh, and that was basically his last conference because when he came back from the uh, IoT conference in Munich, he was really coughing a lot. And I thought it was because of the garage uh, that he got a, uh, a cold. And then I asked him to visit the doctor, and the results from the from the visit after two weeks of test were not that great. And basically, he came back with the news that he had uh, metastasis in both lungs. Uh, at the time, and uh, Peter had cancer. I mean, he went. He worked for Samsung for some uh, IoT, uh, IoT um, mesh project to be able to uh, put two phones together to that they could communicate uh, in a kind of a mesh uh, way. Uh, that was in 2009, 2010, and he came back from uh, from South Korea. Uh, with basically a cancer in the in the duodenum, uh, apparently he had eaten some crude fish with sushi, uh, sushi with crude fish, and uh, apparently in this area it's quite common this kind of uh, uh, disease. Um, so I, w I visited him at the hospital, and he was kind of yellow, um, uh, and he was on chem uh, chemotherapy, but he managed to to survive it. And I think from this moment in time, uh, his life changed. Uh, he, he saw that the cancer could
could come back. And basically, he, for example, he decided to stop, to stop entirely writing closed source software. He said, uh, uh, free software is the future, and if there is something that needs to survive, it's free software in the long run. And uh, from that moment in time, he spent much, much more time with his kids. Um, he wrote several books. All the books that he wrote are basically from, from 2010 on. So I'm going to show you the small demo that we, we made with the, the small devices uh, and that we presented in Munich. Um, OK, I'm going to explain a little bit more about how this cluster works. This is a TP-Link wireless router. It's been set up, runs on a battery. These uh, LiPo batteries will last for about 12 hours. They are quite nice. The only thing that we don't really like is this cable at the back, but that's still a work in progress. Now, here I have one of these little guys unplugged. So I'm going to plug them in, switch them on, and you will see roughly how long it takes for the network to come up. If you see there, a little LED light is switched on. Let me plug in these in the same way. OK, so we have three. This is the third one. And now the fourth one. And what we've done with these is that as they start booting, the LEDs will, will indicate, but we'll actually have the light showing. They'll flash once every second as they boot up, and they flash twice when they're ready. So that flashed. That one's going to flash soon. And the other two will flash. Oh, there we are. <coughs> so that's ready. And when they're ready, you'll see on top that there's a little rotating sequence on the LEDs. That's actually the Glard 150 demon doing the work. And that daemon is a Zyre application which <coughs> connects to the Wi-Fi network, finds other nodes, joins a cluster, and it starts actors which manage the lamp, which detect the switch, and which manage the LEDs. And now basically it's ready. And if I go into emergency mode in any of these guys, then they all start blinking. Happy little bunnies. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Very robust. So you see that latency is really good. It interrupts this, switches off right away. And they all work the same way. So this could be anything. This is now just a demo of a Morse code signaling. It could be an alarm system. It could be temperature sensors. It could be control of uh, devices in a factory. Um, so far, we've been testing this for about three or four days. And we've had no. No Wi-Fi failures, and no issues with stability. This little Wi-Fi network is surprisingly powerful. So there you are. All the source code is on GitHub. Follow the link below, and have a nice day. Bye-bye. So that was his last demo. Uh, now I think I still have one or two minutes. Mm -hmm. um, so Peter was kind of. Uh, uh, after he passed away, I discovered he was a member of Mensa, which is the high IQ organization. Uh, I think he was a very intelligent person. Uh, for me, he was like one of my uh, reference. And uh, he published, uh, I think, a week before passing away, uh, he published a summary of uh, his life with all those software projects that he went through. What, uh, where he failed, where he succeeded, what went well, what went wrong. Uh, and for me, this kind of a guide because uh, I think most of us are in professionally are in software development or uh, in IT, and uh, you have this kind of request from your boss: Can you make this impossible? Uh, I mean, some kind of mission, mission impossible. And uh, at the beginning, he was accepting anything. Uh, but after some time, he said, uh, uh, yeah, basically, he could see in advance what would work and what would not work. So um, um, I think you can learn a lot in your daily life from the recommendations that are in this book. Um, 
So I, before I, I, I came here to force them to, to present uh, <coughs> the memorium uh, that I'm going to give at, at 6 p.m. this evening, yeah. I had to go. So this book is available online for free uh, on PDF and EPUB. Um, but uh, uh, Peter had, uh, had, uh, had uh, still has three kids who are very young. Um, so I would encourage you if you have, if you have, uh, uh, you basically I encourage you to buy to buy his books. And uh, there's also a PayPal account if you want to donate some money for the kids. I think uh, the money is going to be is going to be well used um, when they grow up. Uh, as the smallest one is five years old, um, and uh, yeah, that's a very sad situation. So, <coughs> um, I wanted to say thank you, and uh, I hope you will have a enjoyable dev room today. Thanks very much.